Today is session three. It's a tongue tie update, how oral restrictions impact feeding, speech, and sleep across the lifespan. As our speaker today, we have Dr. Richard Baxter. Many of you may have heard of him and taken his course. Uh, Dr. Baxter is a board certified pediatric dentist, fellow of the AAPD and diplomat of the American Board of Laser Surgery. He is an internationally recognized speaker on tongue ties, instructor of the acclaimed online course, Tongue Tied Academy and lead author of the best-selling book, Tongue Tied, How a Tiny String Under the Tongue Impacts Nursing, Speech, Feeding, and More. He is the founder of the Alabama Tongue Tie Center, where he uses the CO2 laser to release oral restrictions. And Dr. Baxter is passionate about educating parents and healthcare providers about the effects a tongue tie can have throughout the lifespan. He lives in Birmingham, Alabama with his wife, Tara, and his three girls, Hannah, Noel, and Molly. And so from here, Dr. Baxter, take it away. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. It is an honor and a privilege to speak with you guys tonight. Uh, thank you for inviting me. been excited about this uh, since y'all asked me. So and actually, I was just in California. I was in LA uh, this past weekend, and then I was in San Diego like the weekend before that. But before that, it had been like 12 years since I've been to California. So anyway, I just missed the weather, thankfully. Um, but a few disclosures. Uh, I am the owner of the Alabama Tongue Tie Center. We do have the book Tongue Tied with a team of specialists. Uh, we receive royalties, but we donate all those to charity. We also have our advanced live patient course at our office, but also the course fee is donated to charity. Uh, comprehensive online course, Tongue Tied Academy, also donated to charity, uh, 100%. So I don't have any interest in dental or laser companies, anything that I mentioned tonight. Uh, I'm not paid by them, don't receive any funding or honorary from them. Um, here's the book. We have it translated to Spanish, French, Polish, Danish, and Chinese, Sheshi Dai. Uh, you can get a free copy on tongue-tie-al.com slash professionals. If you don't have one yet, it's also on Amazon or Audible, but uh, can we donate all those royalties? And then in 2024, uh, we have uh, Portuguese, Korean, Zungenbond, which is German and then uh, Italian coming. So excited to get this information out there uh, to a worldwide audience. There's a need for it. Uh, this is my COVID project, Tongue Tied Academy. It's 25 hours on demand, like bite-sized lessons, the A to Z of tongue tie treatment. And then our live course to finish it off. Uh, after they take Tongue Tied Academy, they come train with us in person. So uh, we do a lot of these. And um, here's what we do with the money. Uh, we have a lot of uh, health projects in Nepal, water projects in Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, uh, human trafficking projects, both both locally here in Alabama as well as globally. So um, want to give, obviously give back and uh, make a difference worldwide. Here's my uh, wife, Tara, right here. And then our three girls, our twins. This is Hannah right here and then Noelle. And that's how I got into this whole mess in the first place. I was not planning on doing tongue ties. Obviously, the Lord had a different plan for me. Uh, and then Molly, she's turning five on Thursday. And then I'll be uh, 38 on uh, Friday. <laughs> so uh, she kind of stole my birthday, but that's okay. She's adorable and it's fine. Uh, here's our office briefly. It's in um, just south of Birmingham, Alabama in Pelham. Here's the lobby, kind of kids around the world theme, um, open bay, and then we have a bunch of quiet rooms as well. But these are uh, tongue tie consult rooms over here. Um, that's the laser, and that's where we do the procedures. So basically, what we do, and what we're going to talk about tonight, is just like a tongue tie update, um, kind of like the nuts and bolts. Um, I gave a similar lecture at AAPD uh, in, back in May, but um, we talked to moms, see what's going on, hear their story, we examine the baby. And then we treat if indicated. So we'll talk about when to and when not to treat. Um, briefly, a couple of quotes to get us started here. So half what we're going to teach you is wrong. This is from a Harvard Medical School dean, right? Like these people coming into medical school, like excited to become doctors. And he's, here's what he said. Half we're going to teach you is wrong. Half is right. Our problem is we don't know which half is which. So as time goes on uh, with new research, new understanding of topics, we realize that either some things need to be modified a little bit or just you know become outdated. Uh, a pediatrician wrote the foreword to Tongue Tied and says, your eyes do not see what your mind does not know. But once you've seen it, it's impossible to unsee. So I remember the first time I looked at a pan of a child and I was like, oh my gosh, this child has like some kind of crazy uh, cancer or something. And it was just the tooth buds all in the jaws, like ready to come in. And it looked so crazy. But now I look at it, like, okay, yeah, we're good. Not messing in teeth. Perfect. Everything's there, right? So like just the difference is your mind knowing it. But once you've seen it, you, you don't go back to thinking, you know, it's crazy. And then uh, last one, the mind once stretched by a new idea never returns to its original dimensions. So on Monday morning, or I guess uh, tomorrow, so on uh, Wednesday morning, 
Um, what I normally give the Sonic a weekend. So what are you going to look at, right? You're going to do your hygiene check. I'm wondering if you're going to look a little bit differently on Wednesday morning uh, than you did this morning, right? At the end of this talk. So we'll see. But to get there, first we got to see what this is. You guys know what this is right here? <clears throat> That's the struggle bus. So all the parents that come see us are on the struggle bus, whether it's a child or a baby or an adult. Um, they're not going to come see me unless they're on the struggle bus. It's just like I would never go to an endodontist and say like, hey, can I have a root canal today? He'd be like, which tooth? Uh, just pick one. You would never say that, right? No one comes to me like, hey, will you laser my baby today? No, they are on the struggle bus big time. And it's like the Hail Mary. It's like the last, you know, the last play of the game with Super Bowl, you know, like we, we don't know what else to do. So uh, how are we going to get there? Our goal is to get to thriving, not just surviving, but thriving, because patients will live with the tongue tie. Uh, we see lots of adults that are successful, have a wife and kids and uh, a job and, you know, come see us and they have a to the tip tongue tie, right? Uh, and then their child may have a tongue tie as well, because it's often genetic. So a few things we have to do, right? We got to get a good history from the parent. This is just normal, basic medicine or dentistry, nothing like remarkable here, but you know, full history, get a good examination, right? We'll get you to the right diagnosis. Otherwise you'll veer off track. Then you want to do the treatment right, the aftercare properly, and then the follow-up to you. Can't leave those out. So you could do like all four steps here to treatment right. And if you forget to do the stretches or the follow-up, it's not going to work as well. Even if you do the stretches, right? But you forget the follow-up, man, like you're not going to be able to see what you did wrong, be able to change course, um, that kind of stuff. So all these things, right? You stay on the yellow brick road and get to thriving. Here's some examples. Uh, these are some cases. These are from very recently. So we actually had a meeting, uh, like all the panelists basically, and um, the other speakers. And I was like, oh, we had some crazy cases today. So I decided, you know what? Let's put those cases in there. This is 11-month-old baby, uh, baby boy. This is the fourth baby. The other three were chunky. Uh, he's skinny. Um, he coughs on baby food. It took three weeks to regain birth weight. That's not normal. Um, I want to take one kind of passy. IBCLC said he's just a lazy eater. The pediatrician said he's gaining weight, so he's fine. Mom asked the dentist if he had a tongue tie. The dentist said no, but he's had no weight gain in the last six months. That's not normal, right? Um, he goes he goes to the bathroom once every seven to ten days. That's not normal either. You know, um, all these things they're common, but they're not normal. He gets frustrated. His nose is congested all the time. Uh, he won't chew or eat any food. I take two bites and then I, he puts it away. He won't eat, right? So a little bit of pain when nursing, some milk supply issues. So let's look in there, see what we see. These are all real patients, by the way, obviously. Um, so here's the lip, pretty tight. Some blanching right here, you notice. It's pretty tight. It's kind of corded. Um, this is the release afterward. Look at his tongue, though. It's not terrible. It's not to the tip. I think a better term is like a tongue restriction, right? Tongue tie, people think it has to be to the tip, right? Ankyloglossy has to be to the tip. Really, it's a restricted tongue. For that individual child or baby, how tight is the tongue and is it causing symptoms? Those are the keys we're going to look at tonight. And so this one, the tongue lifts about maybe half to two thirds the way, so pretty good. And some babies might have this be totally fine, right? But look at this. We released it. Now the tongue goes all the way back, so way higher, okay? So much more mobility. So you restore function or mobility to the tongue. You should get improvements here too. So this is just on January 22nd, right? This is just like a, a couple of weeks ago. Um and so this is 11 month old. So he just actually turned one last week. So he'd only gained three ounces in three months. But a week after we did it, or sorry, 10 days after right here, this is all real, seven and a half ounces up. Okay, that's twice what he gained in the previous three months. He used to cough all the time, day and night choking on saliva. He's not anymore. Um, he couldn't take a bottle. It used to take him 60 minutes. Now it takes him five minutes. This is the same patient, right? No more coughing on solids. He's more relaxed when breastfeeding, deeper latch, less popping off and on, better weight gain. Nose is less congested even. Pass, he stays in better, okay? Same day, same day. Here's the next patient I saw, okay? Uh, Seven-month-old male this time. He lost weight, hasn't gained in three weeks, uh, won't do purees, gagging, choking, snoring, mouth breathing, constipation, spitting up. They have to add rice to all this stuff. He's not babbling. He's tripod sleeping with his bum in the air. That's concerning. Uh, only poops every other day, and he's straining a lot to get that out. Here's the picture. Now, we did not do his lip tie. The lip's not blanching. It goes all the way down, but it wasn't causing a whole lot of seal issues for him. So we decided to wait on the lip tie. Uh, we don't just treat everything, right? Try to be discriminated. So here's his tongue. It's a little bit tighter. See, his just lifts maybe halfway or less, okay? 
should flip all the way back. Like it's lifting maybe 60 degrees, should go back to like 120 degrees. And then see right here, there's the diamond afterward. Look how much higher the tongue goes. It's the same angle, same everything of the pictures, right? Okay, he was uh, up 13 ounces and he hasn't gained in three weeks. All right, he ate mashed potatoes, less falling asleep, happier baby, uh, babbling more. He's blowing raspberries now, sleeping longer, less snoring or mouth breathing, less moving his sleep, eats solids better. Same day, here's another one. This is not like, I, I could almost pull the cases from Monday if I wanted to, like it's, it's like every day. Okay, so here's a two-year-old. This is our speech, uh, here's our child form. So speech issues, eating issues, and sleeping issues, we'll go over these. So speech, he had some speech issues. He only has about 30 words. At two, you should have about 100 words. So that's a speech delay according to the speech therapist. Um, he has trouble with meat, often it's meat or mashed potatoes, but meat for him, gagging, spitting out foods, won't try uh, new foods. It's hard to brush his top teeth. He's got a gap up there, really strong gag reflex. Uh, that's a pretty big gap. That's a pretty large uh, diastema. It's probably three millimeters or so. Um, not likely to close on its own. You release it. It closes up pretty rapidly, actually. Um, look at his tongue. It lifts up maybe a third of the way. It's very tight right? But it's not to the tip. And so a lot of people say, oh, there's no tongue tie there, but that's plenty tight to cause issues. Notice how much mobility he has afterward. Okay. A lot more mobility. This is the same day, 122, 24, talking better, new words, babbling more, said the babysitter's name, less spitting out foods, only gagged two times the whole week, right? Um, so why am I talking to you guys? Why pediatric dentists? We see children more frequently than any other health care provider. It's every six months. We're already focusing our exam on the mouth. We're the only ones that have the behavior management aspect, meaning we can assess under the tongue without losing a finger, using a mouth prop, a tooth chair, whatever. We often treat without general anesthesia or sedation, right? We have, we have to do procedures on awake kids, okay? We're the only specialty that's crazy enough to do that. So a filling is actually harder than a tongue tie release. If I had to do a class two filling or even a, like a facial, right, on E or a lip tie, that's like, the filling is way harder. Okay. We also have growth and development training or prevention mindset. We want to help children thrive, right? And then we're also highly skilled and working in tiny mouths of awake children. There's no other specialty that does that. So really what we need is a paradigm shift from the old paradigm, which is typically how people are treating tongue tie now, whether it's a dentist, a pediatrician, ENT, an OB, whoever's snipping it or clipping it, this kind of the old paradigm that's, you know, most people are still doing. It's a problem focused history. And for example, this is like what I would do if someone had a toothache, right? They come in, hey, what's going on today? It hurts with hot and cold. Let me take a quick look. Let me get the tooth out. Call us if you need anything. Works great for a toothache or something like that. Okay. App this ulcer. Okay. Right. But for tongue tie, does not work as well. So they do a problem focused history. Hey, what's going on today? Having some trouble nursing. Let me take a look. Maybe a finger caught, maybe just like a, um, a tongue depressor. We'll do a snip or a clip. Right. Boop. That's it. See you later. Do you have to do stretches? Nope. No stretches needed because they didn't get it all the way. It's just a line. It's not like a diamond shaped wound that we're talking about. Okay. So it's a minimal clip. You, you don't need any stretches. Um, follow up as needed. Call us if you need anything. Surgeon, maybe lactation, maybe speech therapist. Most of the time you add all that up, you're going to get minimal results. So what's the difference? So what we're doing is a new paradigm, right? So we get a comprehensive history, 50 item questionnaire, a full exam, right, of the baby, full release of the restricted tissue, stretches three times a day for four weeks, make sure it doesn't stick back together. Follow up mandated, either virtual or in person. Team approach, we're working with lactation, the PT, chiropractor, CST, the pediatrician, I have a slide on it, uh, orthodontist, whoever, you will likely get impressive results, okay? That's the difference, this is the difference. Here's some pearls, remember nothing else. And again, all these are in the, um, there's, a, there's a handout in the chat, okay? So if you guys don't have it, there's a handout in the chat or someone else can post it in there. Uh, but I want you guys to have these slides. We always work with a team approach to care. All proper diagnoses start with a proper history. So misdiagnosis he's com either comes from not listening or not examining fully. So listen to mom's story all the way without interrupting, empathize with her. It's easy because my girls all had it. I had it, right? Um, review all the symptoms systematically one by one, take notes, and then you can examine properly. So with gloves and tools as needed. So often if it's a two-year-old or a 18-month-old, you're going to have to use a mouth prop or else they're going to bite your fingers, okay? Um, you can check their teeth for a dental check, but you cannot get under the tongue easily without a mouth prop. Uh, symptoms and function are more important than the appearance. 
So we're talking about that too. If they have all the check marks, all the symptoms of a tongue tie, that means that tongue is not working the way it should. And very likely there's a tongue restriction. And then we look at risks versus benefits and see, okay, do we think the benefits are going to outweigh the risks, which the risks are honestly minimal if you're doing it the right way. We image all areas of concern. We discuss the findings with the parents and then make a plan. And then either for you guys, either release fully if you're trained. This, this one hour lecture is not enough to do it. So I'm going to show you how to do it, but this is not enough. Um, or refer to a knowledgeable provider, right? High quality stretches are critical, not just like mediocre stretches. We show those to the parents, have the parents do them back, and we follow up at one week minimum or more often as needed. A patient coming back uh, Saturday um, that we just saw on Monday, they live in Missouri, but they're coming back for the follow-up because it's that important. Most people, they're you know three or four hours away, they'll come back, but further than that, they're, they're not going to come back. So team approach, lactation, pediatrician, speech therapist, OT, myo, release provider, uh, the dentist, ENT, orthodontist, sleep, phys sleep physician, PT, chiropractor, others. Uh, it takes a village, right? We're not just doing this in a silo. Here's our infant form. This is for under 12 months. Uh, Dr. Kotlow made the first version. I, I kind of modified it a little bit. Essentially, on the left here, these are more tongue tie issues. On the right, these are more lip tie issues. On the bottom, these are mom's issues, okay? Um, and then we also add a couple questions about like mental health, because that's really important. Because again, a lot of the moms come see us, they're really struggling and they are have clinical postpartum depression. All right, we check everyone with the EPDS-10, uh, checks for postpartum depression. Um, so how do you use this form, right? Weight gain is just one check mark on here. So often people are like, oh, they're gaining weight, they're fine. Well, you know, often there's all kinds of things that can happen. So they could have, they could have weight gain or they may not. We have a lot of chunky babies that come see us and they have every other check mark, right? And the mom has seven out of 10 pain. If it's really bad pain like that, for whatever reason, it's often a less obvious tongue tie. The ones that are to the tip do not as often cause the really uh, terrible pain. Okay, all kinds of other issues, mastitis. I mean, like I could go on and on, but colic, reflux, gassy, spitting up, all the things. So the typical treatment is, okay, they're gassy, here's some gas drops. They're colicky, here's some gripe water. They're spitting up, here's some Zantac. Sorry, that causes cancer. Let's do Pepsid. That's not working. Let's have some Nexium. Uh, it's not working. Uh, it still hurts. Here's a nipple shield. That's not working. Here's a bottle. And what we're doing is giving a family pack of Band-Aids to the family instead of addressing the root cause, which may or may not be a tongue tie. But one of the things that's often overlooked and is not even on the differential diagnosis, like for colic or for spitting up, is a tongue restriction, right? It doesn't have to be to the tip. It could be halfway back. It could be a quarter of the way there, right? So we need to look at the root, not just the fruit. Here's our child form. This is for 12 months and up. Sorry, I'm talking fast. I only have one hour and I want to like pack as much in. It's late. It's almost eight o'clock here. I know it's late for you guys. Uh, so I'm trying to give you money's worth. All right. Um, I think it's a free webinar, but still want to give you money's worth for your time. <laughs> all right. Speech, feeding, sleeping, and then other, right? And then we have a history of issues as a baby. Okay. And then we have this other kind of like lip tie box down here. So all this stuff here, this is all tongue tie stuff. And then down here, this is lip tie stuff. So if someone comes in, they have a gap in the teeth and it's hard to brush the top teeth and they're flipping a spoon over, you know, maybe just a lip tie, but if they also have picky eating and choking and spitting out food and they're a slow eater, I don't know of anything else other than tongue tie that really causes slow eating. Often people think eating is just a hundred percent personality. That's just Johnny, but often there is a restricted tongue. Um, speech delay, stuttering. I, I can show you videos of that. Uh, crazy videos of stuttering, baby talking, mumbling, R's, L's, S's, SH sounds. They often had a history of issues as a baby, neck tension, strong gag reflex, hyperactivity because they're not sleeping well. They're moving around a lot. They're wetting the bed, even though they're nine years old still, grinding teeth at night. It's not just from stress. It's it's not just psychological stress. It's physiologic stress. They can't breathe. It's airway issues. Their, their tongue is flopping back in the airway, narrows or cuts off the airway, get less oxygen to your brain. The brain wakes them up and says like, hey, like we're not getting enough air, right? The same reason you don't die when your head goes in the pillow, right? You just, you wake up a little bit. It's called a micro arousal. And then they toss and turn all night. Some of you guys right now are like, he is talking about my kid. That's Samuel or that's Lucy, right? And if your kid has a bunch of these check marks on here, there's a very good chance that their tongue is restricted. All right, adult assessment. It doesn't get better over, it just changes over time. It doesn't go away over time. The tongue tie does not stretch out. It's not, they're not gonna fall and rip their tongue. They can fall and rip the lip tie. We don't advocate that as a treatment strategy, but the tongue is not gonna change over time. 
adults have speech issues, sleeping issues, other, so neck tension, stress, constipation, reflux, um, all kinds of stuff. They had uh, tonsils out. They had sinus surgery. They had teeth extracted for braces, jaw surgery. I've had a bunch of those, right? Um, they have a difficult baby. They have trouble swallowing pills, trouble singing. It's hard to talk fast, right? All those things. So how do we examine? It's for babies, right? So we're going to come from behind for kids. This is a mom. Uh, she's actually a pediatric dentist in Germany, brought her kid to see us. And she, didn't, she came just to visit, but she didn't realize her child had an almost to the tip tongue tie. No clue. And he had speech issues and he was a slow eater and they have to be able to eat their meat in Germany. Right. Um, and they were having all kinds of issues. It's like sleeping issues. Right. When we treated, they were better before they went back to Germany. <laughs> Here's how we examine the babies. We're going to lift up, come from behind. Notice the lip tie is blanching. That freedom's blanching on the gums there. We're going to check for cheek or buckle ties. I'll show you those two. This one's in the middle. It's so like a class two. It's on the gingiva. Kind of run your finger up there. Feel how tight it is. We'll get a picture of it. <laughs> And check under the tongue. This one's pretty obvious, um, but still uh, people didn't know this child had a tongue tie. I think it was like a month old and no one knew why they couldn't nurse. And it was very thick and fused to the tip. Okay. So that's way too tight. Here's how we treat it. This is the CO2 laser. So we're just going to hover over the top. It's about 15 seconds or so. Lots of tension, a tight tip to tissue distance. We're moving pretty slow with the hand speed. And then it's, what it's doing, it's not burning it, it's not crushing it, it's vaporizing the tissue. It superheats the water molecules in the tissue to 100 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of water, and then it just turns the steam or vapor. Okay, it just disappears. Under the tongue, same thing. Now, if I were to use scissors, it would bleed as soon as I made one cut, it would bleed. I did some with scissors in Nepal, and it was I was missing my laser when <laughs> I had to come home. So, but look at this. So often you use scissors, you have to stop there because you can't see anymore. You can't see what's there and you don't want to cut something because there are some structures down there you do not want to cut, right? So we're staying midline. I can clean it up, but it's just like a in vivo dissection. It just disappears, like erases it. Uh, it's super cool. And that's really the magic why we can do these things on like these three-year-olds and five-year-olds that we would previously have to put to sleep to treat. And now we can do it in the office and it takes the risk from general anesthesia, four bills from children's hospital to like, hey, it's like 15 seconds in the office, some topical, no shots. Hey, it's, it's worth giving it a try, right? So here's the lip ties for babies, uh, spectrum of restriction. Again, this is the worst we've ever seen. This is like, it's very minimal. So we would not treat this one. We may not even treat this one. 94% of babies come down and have a low freedom. So it depends what symptoms they have. It depends, is it blanching? Is it causing distress? Is there a, uh, a um, dimple up there? Um, is like notching the bone? Uh, see the blanching there? <clears throat> have all different appearances. Can they flip up to the nose is a good test. So all these things we're kind of assessing when we look at babies. Tongue, same thing. This one's really short and really tight. This one's tight almost to the tip. But some people would say that's a mild tongue tie. That is not mild. I'd say this is more mild but it's kind of like being a little bit pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not, right? So you're either tongue-tied, meaning it's restricted and causing a functional issue for that individual, or it's not. So this one right here uh, could have no problems, okay? Then we wouldn't treat it, but they would never come see us because I'm the tongue-tie center, just like I'd never go to the endodontist, right? Even this one right here, it's like so minimal. You see that little string there? For that individual patient, it was too tight. How do I know? They had a mountain of symptoms and we treated it and it got better. These ones too right here, these ones were clipped previously. If people got them back for follow-up, they would have seen the tongue is still restricted. It should flip all the way back. Okay, here's one. This is the same patient. So if you just peek in there, not much. If you challenge the tongue, you lift up on it, the fascia fibers bundle together, right? The connective tissue bundles together, it gets tighter. Same patient, just two fingers now, I can see the string, okay? Here's one on a hygiene check I saw. Okay, it's a little bit tight. Notice O and P are turning in. Okay, O is fused, but it's like, okay, just, but look more than just fused teeth on your exam. Look at the tongue. Check under the tongue tomorrow, please. Check under the tongue. Lift up the tongue. So what do I do on a hygiene check? Hey, mom, any speech or eating or sleeping issues for Johnny? For this one, they said, nope, he's good. I said, okay, great. Well, let us know if you have any concerns in the future. His tongue is a little bit tight, but for him, it's not causing problems. There'd be nothing to do, right? We never want to over-treat or under-treat. Right, we always want to get right on. All right, so buckle ties. So buckle ties, we published an article on this in October of 2023. If you type in Baxter buckle tie on Google, it'll pull it right up. 
Um, but basically, we have acute acrostic here. If it, is it blanching the tissue, uncomfortable to palpate, meaning the babies cry when you palpate it? Uh, clinical impact, like what symptoms are there? Are they compensating? Where's the attachment site? So is it class one in the mucosa? Is it in the gingiva? Or is it to the alveolar ridge? That's the class three. And then is it limiting the range of motion? Probably one in 10 tongue-tied babies we're doing. We do not charge for these. We're not just trying to make extra money. Do not charge for buckle ties if they have it. It takes another 10 seconds. Minimal risk. There's like some small little blood vessels up there, but like it'll stop bleeding in a few minutes. And there's a possible likely benefit with seal issues, okay? This is the before and that's the afterward after you treat it. It's just like a lip tie, it just disappears. But check for it. For children, this one had perfect speech. This one over here was nonverbal. Now he also had autism, right? But he's lifting the floor of his mouth up. It was restricted for him. We released it. He started talking afterward, slept deeper. Mom thought he was dead because he was still and he wasn't snoring and tossing around everywhere. And then um, he was eating. He ate salad for the first time. Like, and he was nine years old. He was shocked. He said mama for the first time at nine. Okay. This one's close to the tip. This one's halfway. So all these were causing problems for these patients. Okay. So it can cause different things for different people. It's highly variable. But again, the symptoms and the function are more important than the appearance. And elevation, lifting the tongue up is the most important for speech, eating, sleeping, breastfeeding, bottle feeding, uh, breathing, important stuff. Okay. It's more important sticking the tongue out. Sticking the tongue out is the worst test. Do not ask them to stick the tongue out. Just lift the tongue up. This one's large, severe early childhood carries, a large diastema, a dog leg, Blanching the teeth, right? It's hard to brush those. They're fighting every time with brushing the upper lip. We release those too. Wait, wait, wait. I thought if you release it before ortho, it's going to cause scar tissue. Aha. Everyone else did too. But as of our article from 2022, this is that now in the pediatric dentistry guidelines. You can check it out. 192 total patients. The reason I put this article up is because for the first guidelines in like 2019, I submitted a, a bunch of changes. They didn't change that. They said, if you have data to show this, prove it. So I did. We went through all the patients. We measured it with like our x-ray software. The gap decreased 94.5% of the time. So I'm not saying, we don't have a control group. So I can't say it causes it to get smaller, but I can say that it does not prevent it from going down and with scar tissue, okay? Half with CO2, the light scalpel, half with diode. Uh, 13 had permanent teeth, 96 primary teeth. It's published in International Orthodontics. That's the European Orthodontic Society's journal, not just like an obscure journal, okay? Large diastema. This is a diode. See, it's kind of charred looking, but hey, it works. This is the same patient, like six, uh, I think a year or two later. This is a couple years after that. Much more hygienic, much more um, aesthetic. When they smile, you can see their teeth better. It's a great service for the patients. This is CO2. See, it's a cleaner cut. Okay, just disappears. Here's another one. This is CO2. The teeth come together, no braces needed. This is the most downloaded article for the last year, year and a half in this journal. Right here, okay? Here's some more, if you don't believe me. Lip tie, they can't brush the teeth. We released it with the diode. There it is, closed up. Here it is, released with CO2, closed up. Easier to brush, more aesthetic. Here's one. This is like a 10-year-old or so. And so, um, he's permanent teeth, right? Oh, it's going to cause scar tissue. Release that. Now you have to get this part right here. If you don't get that part right here, it will not close up. Okay. If you just like cut up here, it's not going to close up. Okay. So if you just cut here, it won't close up. But look at that. Crazy. No need for braces. Save him $6,000. In California, probably 10000 I don't know. There's 6000 here in Alabama. All right. So we need a screening tool. Some has to be quick and easy. You can use for your hygienist. You can use it on a well child check. If you're a pediatrician, we combine the symptoms, function, parent desires. It should be useful. We're also at the point. It should predict related issues and obviously prevent treating if there's no issues. We never want to over treat, obviously, because we don't want to harm people for no reason. Do no harm. But at the same time, we don't want to under treat because you can also do harm by under treating, right? You want to get right in the middle. If it's in your power to do good, you want to do it. So step one is the tongue range of motion ratio. Grade one is you can lift more than 80%. That's considered normal. Grade two, 50, 80% is average, but still some people fall in that grade two could have issues. So we have to check those as well. Grade three, this is below average. So if they can lift their tongue less than halfway, if you lift less than 25%, that's significantly below average, right? It's like bottom 10%. But you got to watch out. Sometimes they're lifting the floor of their mouth. So you can take a glove finger, hold down, and now you get a picture of their true mobility, okay? 
here's an example with an opera singer. We've done a lot of opera singers um, and some uh, country singers. Okay. Uh, one guy in Zach Brown band, he did a podcast, so I can tell you that, but anyway, uh, so without breaking HIPAA, but lots of sleep issues, obstructive sleep apnea, neck tension, strong gag, um, compensating with singing, constipation, stress or anxiety. Don't hold chiropractic adjustments. Well, mouth breathing a lot, right? So let's see, here's her tongue. Looks pretty good. That's like a grade two. Hold on, hold it down. That's their true mobility. That's like closer to grade three or grade four. But look at after, still holding down, boom, goes up way higher. And then we sutured it closed. We suture teens and adults, 4 chromic gut suture, um, healed up beautifully. And then a week later, uh, singing is easier. She said, less moving at night, less need of sleep appliance, hard to clean her bottom teeth, less jaw tension, posture is better, less neck and shoulder tension. This was published in March 2021 in Compendium. Here it is. You can look, uh, look it up. It's uh, open access. We try to publish everything open access so you can see it. If you want to download any of the articles, all of our forms we use, there's the QR code or tongtieal.com slash professionals for free. We're not going to charge anything. There they are. The TRQ. This is the greatest hits of that child form we saw earlier. Instead of like 50 things, there's like 15 things. So essentially what you're doing with this is it's just kind of giving you an ability to have a conversation with the parent during a hygiene check that will take just a couple minutes instead of 30 minutes so your hygienist don't hate you. All right, so if they have a speech delay and they're grinding their teeth at night and they're snoring and they're mouth breathing and they're hyperactive and they significantly impact quality of life and their tongue is a grade three, should we refer them for treatment? Not saying they have a tongue tie, saying should we refer them for a further evaluation? Yes, that's concerning, right? If it's just a couple of things, it's not really impacting quality of life. It's grade two. I don't know. Maybe it's just to talk to the parent, right? So someone's like, well, how do you know when to do it? Well, I made this helpful infographic. Everyone loves infographics. So if it's obvious, it's to the tip and there's lots of symptoms, that's a slam dunk. You're very likely going to get something toward the end of the whole deal after you've done the stretches and they've paid the money and they've traveled and they do the procedure. Are they going to say, yes, it was worth it or no, it wasn't? This, they'll say it was worth it most of the time, like 99% of the time. If it's obvious to the tip, they have few symptoms, that's also like low hanging fruit. That's probably worth it. If it's minimal appearance though, this is where it gets people. If it's minimal appearance, but they have tons of symptoms, that's also low hanging fruit. Almost always you'll see some improvements to where the parents say it was worth it. What we're looking at is patient-centered care. It's not just like doctor-centered care, it's patient-centered care. So talking to that individual patient, uh, seeing what their desires are, what their goals are. They've already tried therapy. They've already tried five times types of therapy, right? Uh, they have therapy three days a week. Like they've tried everything. They don't know what else to do. They've already had tonsils and adenoids out. They're still snoring. What do we do with those kids? They're in your dental office and it's often a less obvious tongue tie. Only time we're really waiting is if it's minimal appearance and there's just a few symptoms, then just wait, right? But we're always talking to mom. Sometimes it's obvious and there's lots of symptoms and mom doesn't want to do it. Okay, we'll come back and see us when you're ready, right? It's always up to the parent, whatever they want to do. Informed consent. So if we don't treat it, what happens? Well, here's what typically happens. Uh, not all these things. I don't have a crystal ball. that make my job a lot easier. But speech delay, articulation issues, R's, L's, S's, SH sounds, TH sounds, stuttering, frustration, they're embarrassed, they get bullied, trouble swallowing. So really slow, picky eating, choking on water, choking on food, gagging with x-rays. You lay them back to do sealants. They can't hold water because they can't lift up the back of their tongue. Those kids have tongue ties most of the time. If you spray water in a kid's mouth and they're laying on their back, they can't manage the water, they're choking. Those kids have a very high suspicion for tongue tie. Uh, small appetite, poor growth and development, mouth breathing, their, oh, their teeth grinding, that's normal to get better. They're just baby teeth. That's a red flag. Oh, I'm not, are they snoring also? Okay. And are they like hyper during the day? Yeah. Okay. So those things, there's very high likelihood they, they could have a tongue tie. Poor sleep quality can lead to poor behavior, ADHD symptoms, affects brain development. By the time the child is three, brain is 80% the size of an adult brain. By the time they're five, it's 90% the size of an adult brain. Infants, their brain's growing at 1% a day. It's crazy. Sleep affects everything. Crossbite, crowding, tongue thrust, high arch palate, uh, reflux, and constipation even we see improve. I would never have believed that, but all the parents come back and say, my kid's less constipated, my kid's less constipated, right, whether it's baby or child or even adults. It's, it's nuts. So to quantify that, we had to have some kind of data to back this up. So what we did was a prospective cohort study, meaning before they even got treated, we said, okay, you want to be in the study? Great. Whether it gets better or not, we're going to report it. 
37 kids, age one to 12, average age is four. So like preschoolers, right? At one week and one month, significantly better speech, eating and sleeping at one week. This is the first study to report a lot of these symptoms, right? Improvements in speech delay, first study to report that. Picky eating, slow eating, choking, snoring, restless sleep. Published in a pediatric journal in September, 2020, okay? It's also one of their most downloaded articles. So how do we do this? I wanna get to five keys for a proper release, okay? Anesthesia, precision, tension, look and feel for fascia, and then size and shape. And anyone can do this. You can do that. If you can do a filling, you can do this, right? Now, there's all the other things you have to take in consideration, like the history, the exam, the diagnosis, treatment, aftercare, and follow-up, okay? This is just for the procedure. Here's what we got to do. We're going to make sure they're comfortable, as comfortable as we can. So I'm going to give everyone strong numbing jelly. Babies, will give them just 2% lidocaine, viscous lidocaine, like magic mouthwash. Um, if they're older, or if they're over four, we'll consider adding some injected lidocaine. Okay, we also want to cause the least amount of pain. So look at scissors. We have cautery, there's scalpel, there's diode laser, CO2 laser, erbium laser. There's different types of lasers. Not all lasers are the same, okay? We want speed. We want controlled, efficient cutting. Ideally, 10 seconds or less, okay? So that'd be like scissors is 10 seconds or less, but then you're waiting 10 minutes to stop bleeding. Um, or there's the CO2 laser and erbium lasers are efficient. Cautery is pretty efficient too, but it hurts. Uh, diode is not efficient. It takes about a minute, a minute and a half per area. Strong topical, 2% viscous lidocaine under 12 months. The compounded topical, you guys are in California, you can get it. It's called the best topical ever. Okay, that's the real name of it. The best topical ever. Just Google it. You can order it if you're in California. And uh, we use it for like operative. Um, so if you do that, you won't even, they won't even feel the shot when you're just doing some fillings, right? It's crazy. And the patients honestly cry similar to dental work. So we're not traumatizing more than we would for a filling or like anything like that. And they're not more traumatized than if we did like a, they got a flu shot, okay? Precision. This one, someone cut in the body of the tongue. That's not where you want to go. That's way too high, okay? Uh, this one, I don't even know where they cut, but they said it was cut as a baby. But this kid has braces on, right? Look how tight that is. And that's afterward. Do you think that'd be affecting her speech or her eating or her sleeping? She cannot... Play a wind instrument. She can, you know, there's like all kinds of things you can't do with your tongue. Um, this one was clipped into the lip tie. That's not going to be sufficient. This is a full release of the lip tie. This one was clipped somewhere in here. I don't know where, but they didn't get it all. And then there's after. Okay. Here's another one. Clipped in the salivary ducts. Don't do that. That's way too low. Got a mucosal, had all kinds of problems. We see these a lot. Again, if people got them back for follow-up, they would see what happened. They did not get it all the way. These are all done with scissors. You can do it right with scissors. It's just harder. It's not one cut. It's about five cuts with scissors, five small cuts. If you do one cut, you end up like this, and it's still held down. Or this one, still held down. And now the parents are confused because they think it's been fixed, and it hasn't. That's what happened to our girls. We were in Ohio. Our pediatrician, who was great, we loved her, she clipped it. And we thought it was better, but nothing got better for the nursing. And then we didn't know why it was still a problem. It's because it wasn't released fully, right? This one was clipped as a baby. He's 36 years old. Does not stretch out. It does not go away over time, right? That's a full release. He can get all the way up. Oh, yeah. The other one was on the bottom was cut into the salivary ducts. <clears throat> all right. Here's how to do it. Lots of tension. Nothing as tight as possible. Going real slow. It's just vaporizing. It's not burning the tissue. It's vaporizing the tissue. A diode heats up to 700 to 1,000 degrees Celsius and burns the tissue. This is uh, CO2, which is this is the light scaffold in particular, but there's also DECA and Solea. I'm not paid by any of those companies, but it just disappears. And there it is. Minimal to no bleeding. Sometimes you get a little bit. I'll show a video later with a little bit of bleeding. This one's three seconds. That's a posterior, not obvious tongue tie right in the middle. We go side to side, horizontal passes and a diamond opens up. You see that we didn't take muscle. We're not, it's not a lightsaber. It's not crushing. It's not burning. Okay. Minimal, minimally invasive. Would you like LASIK or would you like a, a blade? You know, all right. This one has a little bit of bleeding on the lip just to show it can happen sometimes. All right, so here's the lip, lots of tension. 
Sometimes you never know why it bleeds exactly. There could be a small vessel in there. If you hit the periosteum, it'll bleed just a little bit. So it's like a dab, not much. If you cut that, it'd be way worse, way worse with, with scissors or a scalpel, it'd be way worse. If they start moving, I just lift my foot up off the pedal and it stops. Scissors, you can't make them stop being sharp. If they move, you're, you're going to cut something, right? If they shake their head around. So we have someone holding the head, they're in a swaddle, laser, laser safety glasses, laser and use sign on the door and suctioning, okay? Here's under the tongue. Pull back as tight as I can. There it is. We're going to go right in the middle and just concentrate the laser energy and it just like, erases it, just disappears. I'm going to feel again for the fascia, make sure we got it all. It was smooth and then we're good. Okay. All right. So where do you do it? Start right here and then go side to side like this. Kind of inverted use to get up there and then you're done. For here, all you're going to do is like this and then side to side like that. That's all you do right there. Okay? Do not start up here like the one we saw. Do not start in the salivary ducts. Definitely don't go down here. Right in the between Wharton's ducts, you're going to get a teardrop shape, okay, on the lip. You're going to get a diamond shape. Skinny diamond is what you're looking for. Take that diamond too wide, you're going to hit blood vessels, lingual nerve, other stuff, okay? You do not have to make a diamond. You just cut a triangular prism horizontally. A diamond opens up, okay? Uh, if you only snip it, you'll have a line. And then, of course, no stretches are needed, right? So at that article that was shared earlier a couple weeks ago, so no stretches are needed because it wasn't a complete release, most likely is what happened in that study. So if you're going to do a full release, it will stick back together. It will re-adhere. People say, oh, we, our baby got sick. We got sick, something like that. We couldn't do the stretches. Boom, right back together every time. So uh, this is my office for a little while. Uh, so it was the nursing room because we had nowhere else to put these babies to nurse. And now we have five consult rooms uh, all built out like this. So nursing pillow, recliner, nursing scale, all the stuff. We use the little uh, baby board, which they don't, they're not making them right now, but a specialized care company sells them. They're amazing for like dental too, for knee to knee visits. Um, they have another one that's kind of floppy, but it works. This is the hard one. Swaddle me and then get like a donut. So we protect their airway. Uh, we have assistant holding the head, someone else suctioning. So how do you choose which tool to select, right? So we can have three factors. We want good hemostasis. We want to stop bleeding. So that'd be a diode laser, ND YAG. They're using heat. Excellent hemostasis. Really good. Better than CO2 at stopping blood, right? Efficient cutting. That's where they're not efficient cutting. So efficient cutting well, that'd be like scissors, scalpel, electrosurge, CO2. Those are all efficient cutters. But then you'll get minimal thermal damage. We don't want to burn the tissue, right? Now we're looking at, well, scissors, scalpel, and erbium are minimal thermal damage and efficient cutting, but they're not good at stopping bleeding. The only one that has good hemostasis, efficient cutting, minimal thermal damage is the CO2 laser. It's not a fad. It's not some new thing. It's been around since 1985. It was developed in 1964, right? So it's not like a new thing. But if you're at the hospital, you can use an electrosurge. Just be careful. Um, so we used it, and then uh, here's some results. Got a nice result. We sutured them close. We got them asleep. I don't take kids to put them to sleep for tongue ties. We do them all awake unless I'm doing a dental rehab and they happen to have a tongue tie. So here's an example. Now, if you take that tip and you touch it to that metal mouth prop, what's going to happen? It's going to arc. Do not do that. It will burn their lip. Okay, you get a burn on the lip. But if you're really careful, here's what lots of tension, same thing. You're just kind of barely touching it. Typically, uh, the cut setting, it's about 12 to 15 on the cut. Um, and then you're taking it down just to the, you're not going to take muscle. You're just going to take it down to the muscle. Take the mucosa. And then we're in the fascia right now. You want to have a nice symmetrical diamond, whatever your tool, if it's scissors or scalpel or electrosurge, CO2, erbium, doesn't matter, diode. You want a nice symmetrical diamond, not too wide, but make sure the tongue lifts up all the way. I'm feeling for fascia. Make sure I get a full lift, and there it is. Now, here's a diode just for comparison. This is a diode laser. It's a hot tip again, so we're lifting up as tight as we can. And see, it's a hot, it's just like a white hot tip and it's trying to cut through, it's just really slow. But under the tongue, think of if you get spit on a hot tip, what's going to happen? That white tip is going to go out, and it's not going to cut anymore. So under the tongue, if it gets spit on it, it stops. If you get too much, they call it tissue snot on it, you have to wipe it off. Um, it's kind of painful to watch. It's so slow. Uh, 
Now, if on a, this is like a school age child, maybe an eight year old doing a lip tie on, it works fine for that because I can numb them up. See right there, I give them uh, some numbing just to the right of that. There's a little spot where I injected. So, I mean, you can, you can do it with a diode on a eight year old. Okay. If you're injecting and they're comfortable like this piece, I can't get that off. I'm gonna have to just pick it with my finger probably, but to do a two year old or like a baby, the diode is not the best choice because it hurts more and it takes way longer. Okay. For comparison, here's the same thing with the light scalpel CO2. All right. Lots of tension. If I wanted to, I could make this go in like five seconds. I can just bump the power up. It'll go really fast, but then that's not as controlled. So a nice controlled, efficient cutting. I also injected on this one. You can hear he's not crying. He's just sitting there watching TV, watching Frozen. I don't know. He's happy. All right. There we go. Now we can get symmetrical, kind of a teardrop shape. So much quicker, easier, less thermal damage. Still minimal bleeding. There we go. All right. Here's the settings we use. So it's like average out to like two watts for the lip, average out to like one and a half watts for the tongue. Okay. Uh, so laser safety officer, obviously we want to follow all laser safety protocols. That's me. I'm the laser safety officer. We have to evacuate proper evacuation system, laser new sign, doors closed. I wear for everyone, including the patient, the doctor, everyone. So here's how to do it. We do not put them to sleep. No adrenal anesthesia, no papoose. If I had to put them to sleep, that would really limit who we can help. And that would also make the risks so high that I can't take as much of a chance on it. Right? So like, I think this is going to help mom, you know, chance it doesn't biggest risks. You pay the money. It didn't help as much as you wanted to. And it's sore for a couple of days in the stretches. But if you add in general anesthesia, okay, now we got $3,000 bill from children's there's anesthesia risk. You know, it's, it's a lot more. And we have a lot of patients that don't even want to be put to sleep for like 12 cavities, you know? So we're already fighting that battle. I'm sure you guys do too. So here's one, this one's kind of funny. We'll see what I did wrong in the end. This one's from a while ago, but look how fast that is. This is on a two-year-old. Okay. This is that same patient we just saw. Boom. I get bit right there. So I put this video in to remind you, always use a tooth chair. Okay. Do not get bit. Always use a tooth chair, a molt mouth prop. So I got smarter and there's a malt mouth prop. Look how tight this is. A lot of people stop right there. They would stop. That's all they get. But then the tongue still doesn't lift up all the way. You got to lift up all the way. There we go. So you see all that fascia? It's an in vivo dissection. Looks like spider webby stuff. That's fascia, connective tissue, the stuff you pull off a chicken. Get a little bit more there. And at the very end, you see the blood vessel pop out there at the end right there. Okay. That's the deep lingual vein. We're not going to go any further. All right. So bleeding complications. Best defense is good offense. So stay midline. If you see a little bit of bleeding, don't try to ablate more with the laser. The laser is good at stopping capillaries, tiny venules. It will not ablate or stop bleeding anything with a name. So like deep lingual vein, lingual artery, like it's not going to stop that. So if you get a little bit of bleeding, like a, you just barely nick it, then just hold direct gauze pressure for 10, 15 minutes. Do not change it out. If you think I need to call Dr. Baxter, ask him what, what to do, don't call me, call 911. I say that because it's happened. All right, and it's stressful. Uh, so just hold gauze pressure and don't check it. What this person was doing, they were checking it. Ah, it's still bleeding. More gauze. Ah, it's still bleeding. Hold it and don't let go. Okay. Uh, 10, 15 minutes. Um, if you do that, almost always sit the baby up, hold them like above, you know, so the head is above the heart. Nursing strike. Once we switch the CO2 laser from diode, we almost never have a nursing or feeding strike. With a diode laser, it is much more common because it hurts more. Even with the proper dose of Tylenol, they're going to have a harder time. So we dose it quarter ml per pound for six to 11 pounds, meaning six pounds is 1.25. That's on the box. Seven pounds, 1.5. Eight pounds, 1.75. Nine pounds, two mLs. 10 or 11 pounds, 2.25. Now you're at 12 pounds, it's 2.5. So we just basically, that's just dosing up per pound because if you give an 11 or a 10 pound baby the six pound dose they will start crying and they will not eat okay so if you work out the milligrams per kilogram it works out to a quarter mil per pound don't cut too deep use the proper tool body work meaning like pt chiropractic cst something these babies if they're really tight and they're in sympathetic and fight or flight or attack mode and you do a procedure ah, like they won't calm down as easily the ones that are just chill and relaxed 
right? They will do much better after the procedure and will be much less likely to have a feeding strike or just like have a hard time. Reattachment, have the parents practice stretches in the office, follow up at seven to 10 days, deeper stretch most of the time they need a deeper stretch. Okay, don't hit these vessels. This one will have muscle in it. See that tented appearance we call it? That's tented. For sure it's gonna have muscle in it. I'll show you video. This one, nothing like obvious here. And then we got in there, whoa, hello, large vessels right there. But again, we use the CO2 laser. We can see it. We can just dissect it and we stop. Way safer. This one has muscle because it was tented. Watch this. So through mucosa, boom, and muscle right away. But the tongue still doesn't lift up. So this is extra muscle that shouldn't be there. It's inside the frenum. And we're going to remove that too. You'll see we hit fascia again, then the actual genioglossus muscle. So there we go. There's the extra muscle that shouldn't have been there. Tongue is lifting up higher. We're lifting up as tight as we can. Now it's kind of opalescent again. So that's fascia. Okay. So we're almost there. Get the median lingual septum a little bit. Between the genioglossus belly. There we go. Now it's much higher. Now we're done. S nice skinny diamond. That's what you want to see right there. Sometimes there's a vessel running right through the middle. You can also do it wrong. This is with a diode laser. They use silver nitrate to stop the bleeding, significant pain, nursing strike, and of course, posts on Facebook for everyone to see, right? So please don't give everyone a bad name by doing this. Uh, treat them right, treat them well, get the proper training. Aftercare heals rapidly. It's not an infection. Uh, they might have more drooling, skin to skin, ideally nursing, but whatever bottles, just get milk in the baby however you can. I call every patient at night to check on them. They have my personal cell phone number. Often they'll have some improvements the same day. We say one better feed the first day, two better feeds the next day, three better feeds the next day. Like Melissa said, it often takes about three weeks to relearn. So this is what you want the wound to look like. Nice uh, elongated, skinny diamond, right? Those look good. These ones are sticking back together. If you see like a T shape like that, or like a big thick wound, this one like a pancake, see right here, push down right here and then up and back. Okay, push down here and then up and back, like a J shape, or like you're scooping ice cream, or like a Heimlich. You go like down and into it, it'll just stretch right out. Okay, I'll show you a video. Uh, we have the parents do it afterward, four weeks, three times a day, high quality stretches. Each stretch is like 10 seconds, it's quick. You're not taking minutes and minutes. Okay, here's a video on how to do it. Dr. Baxter, we're gonna go over tongue tie stretching for infants. I want you to do these stretches three times a day for four weeks. We'll start with the upper lip, lift up all the way, and flange it all the way out, and massage right on the site. That's really important. Get all the way up in the vestibule about three times. With the tongue, hold the lower gum pad with your non-dominant thumb. Push down and stroke backward. Pretty firm right on the diamond. Make sure you get all the way in there. If your baby had cheek tie release, go up on the cheek in the vestibule. On both sides, just about three times, the same thing, just kind of separating the tissue out, making sure it looks good. One more time, here it is again. So lift the lip up all the way. It's real quick, not taking minutes and minutes. Just get in there and get out. Push right on it, pretty firm pressure. The babies do not like it. If there's a better way, we would do that, trust me. We would do that. Um, hold the gum pad with your thumb, one index finger, and watch out, see that slipped back. So push really good, don't let the tongue slip back. About three times right on there, so you see the whole diamond open up. Now a deeper stretch, if you don't come back for a follow-up at one week, do this, this or so if key. symptoms come back at any point. So this is three weeks later, there's still a string there. Came, came right back. back. So I'm gonna push down right on the string, just like a normal stretch, but right in the middle. Notice it opened up some. Stroke it back a couple more times. You'll see it'll open up some more. There will be a little bit of bleeding whenever you do this. Not and even then that open hard, back up, right But on. now restore the function of the tongue, and then symptoms should improve afterward. So if you do it that way, then you don't have to laser it again. So if someone comes back to you three weeks later, six weeks later, always try a deeper stretch first before just lasering them again. Uh, for best results, we're with a speech or myofunctional therapist. For kids, it's twice a day. Babies heal faster. So kids, at like 12 months and up, twice a day for four weeks, minimum once a day if they're like super uncooperative. See them back at one week. Most, 90% of loss of mobility, they need a gentle but effective deeper stretch. All right, follow up with all patients in person or email. Check for symptom improvement. Check healing. Do the stretch. Warn them there might be some bleeding, obviously. Be gentle, but, you know, right on it firm, slow pressure, kind of guiding the tissue. Um, make sure they're doing the team approach. They've like, have you seen lactation since they're released? Have you seen the chiropractor, the PT? Have you seen speech therapists? Then change your surgical technique based on the findings. If something's not working, change it. Okay, here's some cases. These are all from January 26th, so just a couple weeks ago. This one, 16-month-old, 
Uh, speech delay, saw five providers, said there's no tongue tie. Extremely colicky, saw GI, mild mild laryngomalacia, colicky, all these issues as a baby. Won't try new foods, no curiosity with food, couldn't do solids, still can't do solids at 16 months. That's common, it's not normal. 16 months, not walking, that's not normal. Sleeps restlessly or optimal, right? It's not optimal to have that. Grinds teeth awake. So if they're grinding their teeth and awake, that's probably teething, that's fine. If it's at night, that's concerning. But mouth breathing, snoring, it's not normal, okay? Here's the look. The lip is fine. The lip is fine. There's no problem there. Look at the tongue. It's not that bad when you just look at it, but look at the function. It can't lift very high. See the difference between this one and this one? It can lift much higher now, okay? One week later, <clears throat> these are all patients on the same day, January 26th, we saw them back. More sounds, mimicking Miss Rachel. He can balance better when he's walking. He's letting go and taking actual steps. It was helping his walking because he had better sleep and also the fascia release. Right, loves Cheerios. He wouldn't touch them before. Actually sleeping in his crib instead of parents' bed. Less tossing and turning. Less waking. Sticking his tongue out more. I mean, like, it, it can have life-changing effects even on a 16-month-old. Because, oh, there's no tongue tie. He's fine. Therapy. Like, no, like, it can help these people. <laughs> Right? Here's a four week old. I don't even have to treat it. Here's Dr. Trigo, right? Here's the other doctor with us. I trained her how to do it. Here's a four week old. Won't stay lashed, colicky, gassy, milk leaking out, hiccuping, like falling asleep in the middle of a feed. Uh, mom's tired and frustrated, doing gas drops, bad pain, like six plus pain, clogged ducts, nipple shield, nipple distortion. Okay. Lip tie, it's thin, but it's tight. Tongue is not obvious, but often the ones that are just like this have that terrible six plus pain. Okay. That's afterward. This is Dr. Trigo treated it, right? Sorry, it's, it's smeared. We use like these uh, wet erase pens and we got some water on it. But anyway, uh, 12 ounces in eight days. Normal weight gain for a baby is like an ounce a day. So gain more weight, um, getting more milk out. So got some more spit up, but better weight gain, happier baby, deeper latch. Uh, pain was a seven. Now it's a two. I mean, much, much better. Here's mom. My name is Haley. My son These is are six real weeks people. old. After a visit real with people. our lactation consultant, we were given the answer as to why breastfeeding has been so uncomfortable and so frustrating for both me and our baby. Turns out he had a tongue and a lip tie, which led to our visit to Dr. Baxter's office to get it revised. Before we went to see him, latching and feeding was absolutely excruciating. I couldn't hardly bear to do it without a nipple shield or just pumping and giving him a bottle. Even on the bottle, he couldn't latch. He was sucking air, gulping, all the things, super fussy still. After the revision, he latches no problems. I'm having zero pain. I don't have to use a nipple shield at all. It's been absolutely wonderful. I couldn't ask for a better experience afterwards. It's, as a first time mom, it was life changing to be able to enjoy that time with my son. Yeah, it's a special time, the newborn period, and they want them to enjoy it and not have to dread feeding them. And they're on the struggle bus, right? Here's another one. Same day. This is, we're seeing this. If people come to our office, uh, basically every Friday for the next couple months, we have like a live course at our office. Uh, and like, we'll see these same things over and over. Okay. It's not like just like random. If you figure out the, the key to getting it done right, it works most of the time. So here's speech, speech issues, speech delayed like slow eating, choking, had to cut their uh, meat up small, tripod sleeping, he sleeps upside down, mouth open, snoring, trouble brushing the top teeth, issues as a baby too, didn't get better. Here's his tongue. Look, it's not obvious. You pull back on it. Okay, there's, there's the string before and after. Okay, here he is. Easier to understand, easier with words, talking more, eating more food the same night. Doesn't doesn't move at all. Less moving around. My Here's mom. Mrs. Hackett and my son Justin had the tongue tie procedure. These are all real people. Um, before the procedure, we struggled with S words, L words, D and B, and since then he has been able to take this, take his tongue and reach to the top of his mouth and make those L sounds better um, while sleeping. We call it the H. My husband on one side, he, I'm on the other, and he's in the middle across from us. Since he's had the procedure, he sleeps in one spot, no moving other than to get up to use the restroom. Um, Eating any different too? Yes. After his first, um, the first day once we got back home, he ate pizza, chips, popsicles, chicken. He 
like over and over and over again. He's usually a very picky eater. So his eating habits have definitely improved. It's way easier to swallow. All right, eight year old, same day. Slow eater, constipation, issues as a baby, didn't get better, just changed. Sleep restlessly, mouth open, gap, uh, mouth breathing. Here's his lip and tongue, okay? Release the lip and the tongue. Oh, notice the difference. Eight years old. No one picked up that he was really tight. Go ahead. Here's mom. Oh, so it's a we girl. We had female. a tongue tie and a lip tie release done seven days ago. Um, she had a lot of difficulty with sleeping, very restless, um, was sleeping with her mouth open, wide open, head thrown back, uh, having a little bit of issues with eating slowly. And ever since we had things released, she says that her... Stuffy nose cleared up immediately. She can breathe a lot better. She's sleeping with her mouth closed now. There's not so much mouth breathing during the day. And she even said that she can move better and has had really good results. Very little bit of pain just immediately after the procedure, but really none since. Doing wonderful. What do you think? Well, I think that I that it's so hard to explain, but I can do everything a whole lot better. I, I can turn my head like this. And I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do this, and I can even do this. <laughs> Lift your tongue up now, perfect. Mm. Good. And then what else did you notice? When you left the office, what did you say about your nose? Oh, I could breathe through my nose like the second I got in the car. I think it was, it, it, it was like the best relief ever. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And so the lip tie, when you release that fascia, they can breathe through the nose better. I would have never guessed that, but that's like what every patient tells us after doing the lip tie. So here's a four week old, uh, again, same day, shallow latch, falling asleep, passy falls out, lip curls under clicking, terrible pain, uh, not obvious tongue tie, not obvious lip is more obvious, right? So if you just did the lip, it would help with some of the stuff like the lip curling under and the clicking stuff. These are the lip tie issues, but they wouldn't have these other improvements. Those are more tongue things. Okay. So afterward, deeper latch, happier baby, fewer hiccups, nose, less congested, less, uh, Frustrated, lips flip out better, much less pain. Mom is feeling more confident, a lot more confident, mentally stable. Okay, here's mom. Hi, I'm Sarah. Uh, my daughter, uh, she is about two weeks old, and we have had quite a journey with breastfeeding. Um, thankfully, we were able to catch a, a lip tie and a tongue tie early on. Um, before we actually got the procedure done, um, it was very painful for me and very frustrating for baby just because she wasn't able to get a lot of milk supply from me um, and also I was in excruciating pain when she would try. So um, that led me to Dr. Baxter's office um, from a referral from my pediatrician um, and after it um, I feel a lot more confident with breastfeeding um, and we are we are getting a lot more milk supply from her. She's a happier baby um, and we're excited for the journey now. I'm excited about breastfeeding her and bonding with her. Um, and it's a, a lot more enjoyable experience. So we're very thankful for the procedure. Awesome. And less painful too, right? And less painful. Absolutely. The, um, the entire procedure or after the procedure, breastfeeding is a lot less painful than what it was before. Perfect. So, I mean, it's so key, right? It's so important. Uh, to have a good experience, good bonding that can affect the child, that mom's relationship the rest of their life. It's very important. It's not like, oh, they're getting weight, they're fine, they'll live. No. I, here's the other thing. No one ever told me, maybe they tell you this, but after doing a filling, no one's ever like, oh, that filling changed my life. Right? Maybe if you like fix someone's chip, they're happy, but like, no, like this is you make life change. It's so rewarding uh, helping these moms and the babies and, and the kids too. All right, here's a five-month-old, same day. These are all on January 26th. I'm not making this up. Tons of issues. We tried 30 different brands of bottles, rice formula, saw IBCLC, pediatric dentist, pediatrician. Uh, they were admitted to the hospital, ENT, nine different professionals. Had a release. Uh, where was that? In Pretoria. Does anyone know where Pretoria is? Okay, Pretoria is in South Africa. These people emailed us from South Africa. I was like, there's no way they're going to come. They came. She got visas and they came from South Africa to Alabama of all places. Okay. Won't finish bottles. Prescribed Nexium. Uh, she read the book. That's how she heard about it. She read tongue tied like three times. All right. Colic, reflux, gassy, all the things. She said, I don't even know. I'm depressed because of lack of knowledge. Pediatric dentist, lip tie and tongue tie, but not a full release. Okay. So I'm curious. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. This is what it looks like. And there's the lip. This is released already. 
And then there's the tongue. It was already done, but it grew back together. So stretches were not sufficient or it wasn't done all the way. I don't know unless they see the before and after pictures. But they had cheek ties too. Okay, maybe had cheek ties. And it's a long way to South Africa. So minimal risk. Let's, I don't want to do it again. Let's do it. Here's a four. Uh, no, it didn't show. Okay. And then the four-year-old comes in. This is the same family. He wants his tongues fixed so his friends can understand him. They speak Afrikaans, so it's a lot of guttural sounds. It's hard for him. He has a speech delay. He's like two years behind. Uh, trouble eating, slow eating, picky eating, constipation, like terrible sleeping. He grinds his teeth all night, sleeps his mouth open, snores about half the time. They also saw a dentist, a pediatrician, ENT. They said he can stick his tongue out. And then mom said, Dr. Baxter says that's the worst test. And they're like, who's Dr. Baxter? Anyway, and then she found us. But she saw seven different providers with this one. Um, ear tubes, like tonsils, like constant ear infections, all the things, right? Look in there. It's pretty tight. Now, his lip is fine. The lip, there's nothing wrong. He's got a decently wide palate, but look at his tongue, right? It's so tight, okay? And then afterward, it looks way higher. You see the difference? Way higher. Listen to their story. Hi, I'm We're Louise. almost done. This is my son, Jaden. And I've got a five month old as well. Dr. Baxter just did um, Jaden's tongue tie release. And a few seconds ago, He's already speaking better after two and a half years speech therapy tonsils taken out seeing ENTs dentists plaque consultants the whole lot and everyone showed me away tells me there's nothing wrong with my son um, his speech is on an age of a two-year-old seconds after dr. Baxter did the procedure he said thank you to the doctor and he said it much better. Immediately and afterward. We do have work. And then Vaynant, which is five months old, had a deep snore. He couldn't keep his milk in. Um, he didn't, he drank now a little bit. No leaking on the corners. And he's not snoring at all. Seconds after the procedure. Awareness needs to be made. Thank you, Dr. Baxter. This is going to be life changing and I'll be forever be grateful. Where are you from? South Africa. These are real people. Real people. There they are. We have a map. So you can put a pin from where they're from. All right. And then this one came in like a couple days later, right? So oh, this is uh, this is the same mom. I don't have time for it because we're running out of time. But this is, the, this is like a couple days later. This is on the 31st, right? Uh, so just like a, a little bit over a week ago. So this is a seven-year-old, but they have cerebral palsy. So if, if they have Downs, cerebral palsy, like autism, they're born premature, everything is blamed on that, right? But you can have a tongue tie and have CP or a tongue tie and have autism, okay? So they have constipation, spitting out food. They have to do suppositories every day to get her to poop. Hip dysplasia, like her hips are really tight. She can't lateralize her tongue, coughing with eating. She has a G-tube. She had tetralogy flow. When she was six months old, her left ventricle exploded. She uh, was without a pulse. 53 minutes, they did CPR on her. Okay, she it's a miracle. Like They had a 1% chance of survival. She was on ECMO for a month. It's a miracle she survived. So she has a mountain of issues, right? All the things, all the things. But look at her tongue. It's pretty tight, and her lip's pretty tight, too. Her cheeks are also tight. There's really not much risk. There's lots of upside, lots of reward. Mom's like, please do it. They came from Ohio. There they put their pin in Ohio. Here's this that my night. Name is Katie Robinson. This is what happened that night. This is my daughter Elizabeth Robinson. We were just in today to see Dr. Baxter. It's January 31st. And uh, my daughter was born and at six months had a massive cardiac arrest. And as a result, HIE, CP, all the labels came that followed. Um she since then, after six months has been suffering with severe reflux, constipation, um, this snorkeling, like, like she, she sounds breathe. like she has a cold all the time on Zyrtex since she, for seven years, she's seven now. And um, uh, we've done all sorts of therapies, flew down to Orlando, a therapist quickly identified she had multiple ties and it's a, a feeding therapist. And she goes, she will do so well releasing this. 
flew in from Orlando this morning to see Dr. Baxter in Alabama. He released the upper lip, the side cheeks, the tongue, and literally when we were in the car, she was breathing again, not snorkeling, breathing, mm -hmm. breathing comfortably. Her face looks so relaxed. Um, she pooped, <laughs> which is amazing because we've been on planes and trains and automobiles and that would not happen. Um, I mean, just the start of, I could see success. I am so, so grateful where we've been bumping into walls. We can see hope and um, praise God. Thank you, Dr. Baxter. And we will look forward to all the gains. Thank you. This is like the next day they sent me this. Thank you both for your God-given wisdom, care, expertise. My life was changed in two days because you both seven years have been told lies. As of today, 2 one I can breathe, I can eat, I can drink, I do not throw up, I can poop, my hips are loose. I do not need to take medication for allergies because I don't have them. I don't have to take suppositories because I can poop. Mom had to give her suppository every day for seven years. Like, it's hard to even imagine that. The list goes on. Bless you both and your families, everything that works for you, all those you help. So, like, these are real people. This is, oh, so important. I'm so glad you guys are here. So you can help people of California because there's a lot of people in California and patients in your office that need help. So proper assessment evaluation is critical. Ask them to lift the tongue, not stick it out. Symptoms and function are more important than the appearance. Common is not normal or optimal. Screening should be conducted at hygiene and well-child visits. The sooner it's addressed and the more team members, the better. You have to, though, assess them, diagnose them, treat them, and follow up properly or else you're not going to get these gains. They change over time. They can last a lifetime, and they place limitations on a patient family's quality of life. So why am I doing this? I'm on a mission. We kind of talk about, like, what are we doing? We want to live for something greater than ourselves. Obviously, this, educating others, training others, also spending time with family. Uh, I was off today with, with the girls, um, and then sometimes I get to sub for their classroom. Uh, so this is me subbing for Latin a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and this is Molly. This is why we do it. She had a to-the-tip tongue tie. If her tongue tie was not treated, she would not be able to sing this beautiful song. Daddy, daddy, the best daddy in the world. Daddy, you're the best daddy. Daddy, you're the best daddy in the world. Daddy, so sweet, loves me so. I love daddy, he's the best daddy in the world. Yeah, there's no way she'd be able to sing like that with a to-the-tip tongue tie. So uh, I went to Nepal. And we trained some pastors to extract teeth. It's a long story. But they end up taking out more teeth in one week than the average dental student takes out in four years. One guy took out 78 teeth, right? Difficult, like third molar, broken down, crazy stuff, okay? Um, it was amazing. And then uh, by the end, they were doing it, and we were just watching. Middle of nowhere. So it's not time to go into all that, but uh, we're running out of time. But yeah, if you want to get the forms, here's the QR code for the forms. You can download the book for free. And then uh, Tongue Tied Academy have a code, CSPD saves $300 off Tongue Tied Academy. We, I don't make a dime off of it. I lose money on it. We donate all the money to charity. Okay, all the money goes to charity, so I pay like the cost for it out of dental money. But anyway, and there's some pictures because I was told not to put up the last slide. So uh, these are some kids we support monthly. We support over 100 kids in India, a bunch of wells all over. So anyway, uh, so I ran over just a little bit, but we have some time for Q&A. I'll stay on as long as you guys want me to. But uh, do you guys have any questions, concerns, right. comments? Great. So thank you, Dr. Baxter, so much for your lecture. That was really great. And we're going to get to questions right now. So for our first question um, was, do you have any thoughts on incorporating the myomunchi for some of these patients? Do you find it to be helpful prior to or after in conjunction with the release? Yeah, there's myomunchi. It basically helps to like basically get or normal. Yeah, like Mile Munchy Healthy Start. There's like a tooth pillow one now, um, like all these different ones. So basically what they're trying to do is get the lips and the tongue in the proper position. Mile Munchy is trying to help them chew more. Use it for about an hour a day if you can. Um, it's not a replacement for tongue, treating tongue ties, obviously. Mile Munchies, you're not going to get many, much, if any, expansion. Um, you're just trying to get like good myo functional, like the tongue uh, resting up, the lips together. So it's, it's helpful. Um, and we do recommend it to some patients. We don't like sell them in the office or give them out though. Uh, we have a good like airway focused orthodontist close by that, uh, handles a lot of our cases. So. Great. Um, and then also we have a question from an IBCLC that she says that she notices that, um, oftentimes she refers from with certain symptoms and in infants or kids, 
that are highly symptomatic, is there anything that you would that would prevent you from proceeding with an immediate revision? Anything you would want resolved prior to a revision? Yeah, so um, she probably means release. So a release is the first time. Revision is like doing it again. Like a circumcision revision means they're doing it again. But I'm assuming it's the first time. So if it's the first time, ideally they have lactation on board. Almost all of our patients have seen lactation first. We don't require it, but almost all have, like 99%. Um, but we have people coming from all over, like middle of nowhere, Alabama. They have no resources. They don't even do Zoom. Uh, they'll do Zoom lactation consultants. Um, body work is really helpful. So often, again, in some small towns, maybe like a chiropractor with some pediatric training is the best you're going to do. Bigger towns, you have CST, osteopaths, PTs that can help. So some kind of body work to help the baby just relax a little bit is really important beforehand. And then if they have the symptoms, all the symptoms, and it, you feel in there, you can feel it feels tight. Does not have to be to the tip. The, to the tip. Please, please help those babies. That's helpful too. Okay. For the next question is, uh, do you find do you find you need to do anything different or additional with Eiffel Tower presentations to get full range of motion? If they have an Eiffel Tower, basically it means like the the spire, and they have like a base. So it's like this and then like this, right? If this is the tongue. So just release right here, right in that middle. And then the bottom part will fall away. So don't, don't do anything different. Just do right a normal release. And often the base will fall away. A very, very rarely we'll have to go back and get a little bit of the base, but almost always just get the main spire part and you'll be good. Great. And how about when doing stretching, how much pain medication is given and what pain medication do you use? Yeah. So for babies or kids, it's Tylenol. If they're over six months, they can have ibuprofen, Motrin. Um, for stretches, we don't do like uh, benzocaine for methemoglobinemia risk. Um, and it, plus it doesn't like work that well. And so just stretches like 10 seconds. The babies hate it. We've tried numbing jelly. I mean, I've even done like injected lidocaine before doing a stretch. It still hurts because it's like the pressure. Like when you take a tooth out, they're going to feel the pressure. Um, so you just have to get through it. Uh, if they're under three years old, they're not going to remember long term. You know, babies, it's a lot easier once they before they get teeth. Just do the best you can. I have some videos on YouTube if you want to watch them on Great. our channel. Um, and so what percentage of infants coming for an evaluation do you think actually get released? So if they're coming to the tongue tie center, it's probably the same number that would go to an endodontist that get a root canal. Okay. So like probably 99% of the time, uh, because they're not going to come see us unless they've done their homework. And most people have been referred by their pediatrician. We had over 40 pediatricians referred to us last year, 43 pediatricians referred to us. Um, we have a lot of people, uh, like lactation that refer to us, speech therapy. So most people are getting a release. It's not always the same day. Um, you know, we save time to do it the same day if they want to, but often it's not the same day. Okay. And the next question is that you mentioned you don't sedate or papoose your, for your releases, but what if the behavior doesn't allow for it? So, I mean, if it's, if it's like a, we had one kid typically developing nine-year-old, he just would not like lay back. He was just being like obstinate. Like, I'm not going to do it. I was like, mom, we can wrap him up if you want to. They're like, yes, just put him in the papoose. Put him in the papoose. We started doing it and he's like totally calmed down. I was like, this is weird. And then like we were done and he like stopped crying and he was just like psyched himself out. Um, I, I think I was the same way when I had to get like a shot when I was a kid, you know what I mean? Just So you do the best you can. Um, it's very similar to doing a filling. If you can do a filling on that patient, you can do the release. Um, if I can get pictures on the patient, we can do the release. So Again, if that's with this a light scalpel, like a CO2 laser, if I did the diode laser, I would not be able to do a lot of these kids because it takes too long. So if you can do it in 10 seconds, basically, if you can give them a flu shot, you can do it. And that kind of leads into this next question is, um, what is your take on quick, sharp scissor clip to release the ankyloglossia? So if you do, again, I, when I was in Nepal, we used scissors because they didn't have a laser. Um, it's not just one snip. You use hemostats first. And then you do like several snips of one in the middle and then two down the left, two down the right. So it's about five and you push on it like a blunt dissection to get that nice diamond shape. You can do it with scissors. It's just going to bleed more. You can't see the vessels under there. You can't take out individual fascial fibers. So it's like way less precise. Um, but you can certainly do it with scissors. You don't have to pay, you know, $40,000 for a laser. Um, but you're, if you're going to do this a lot, you'd probably want to invest in the laser. Okay. And then what is your criteria for suturing? Um, some providers do suture on infants and you mentioned that you don't. Um, yeah. 
Is there any characteristic or something that would indicate when to suture, when not? Uh, it's a long story. So I had my tongue tie released by Zoggy. That's why I was in Los Angeles on Saturday. Um, my sutures have all but basically fallen out, and that's it's Tuesday. So they they last a couple of days, and that's by Zoggy. Like it's like three days they're gonna last. So if you do sutures on a baby, it takes the difficulty of the procedure. So I'm teaching the procedure basically with this. Uh, from 10 seconds to now you're doing like five minutes for the procedure it takes the difficulty from like a three out of 10 difficulty to like a nine out of 10. So it's way harder to suture on babies. Um, you're gonna have a hard time doing that. You, you can charge more. It's a frenuloplasty fee. Uh, I don't know if that's why people do it or not for, for kids or babies, but, um, it's, it's really not needed. We get really good results with high quality stretches. And even if you suture, you still have to stretch afterward. You can wait a few days, but you still have to stretch afterward or else it will contract and grow back together for about 28 days is that wound contraction period. So that's why we stretch for about four weeks. Um, so there's not really a benefit in my mind. It increases the cost, increases the bleeding, increases the difficulty. I don't see a lot of pros to it. Okay, perfect. Teens and adults. If I do teens or adults, I will suture. Or if they're asleep for a dental rehab, I'll suture. At what age would you consider that to be like a teen or adult? 13. But like if they're a cooperative 11-year-old, the parents want it sutured, we will. Perfect. Or if like the therapist requests it. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And then um, what are your thoughts on doing wound care with the baby facing outwards, um, doing a bouncing standing stretch? You can try that. It's going to be harder to do it, though. Um we try to keep it playful, like make funny noises, but at the end of that, you still just have to get in there and get out. So in my mind, it's better to get in, get out. Don't do like five minutes of stretches and making the baby mad. Um, it's it's a little like 10 seconds for the lip, like 10 seconds for the tongue if they had both, and then like calm them down. And they almost always, they will calm down pretty quick. If they're not calming down quick, they need to see like a body worker of some kind because they're they're in sympathetic or attack mode. All right. And for the next question, um, what do you do when you see some reattachment happening, um, improve function or not? How soon would you do a revision? So if I see them back at one week, at three weeks, at six weeks, um, I'm going to try just like a, it's basically, it's, we call it a deeper stretch. That's basically so the parents don't feel bad. Everything we're doing, it's a lot of psychology involved. So we're just going to massage just a normal pressure stretch, just right on it. And almost always it just kind of just separates out like that a little bit. And you'll see it'll just slide over itself. So if you go back and laser it, now they got to do like three or four more weeks of stretches. If it stretches out, I'm thinking it's probably about another two weeks of stretches. And so that's always preferable. You don't want to have to put introduce more laser energy if you don't have to. Um, and then so I would try that before doing a revision. Now, if it's like six or 10 weeks out or like five months out and symptoms came back, sure, I'll revise it. We do not charge if it has to be redone again for any reason within a year. So we do not charge for that. Um, it's it's one fee. There's no charge for follow-ups, no charge for buckle ties, no charge to redo it within a year. And then that leads into a question in regards to billing. Um, do you bill insurance for these procedures or uh, medical or dental? So we used to bill dental and it was a big headache and they would deny one or both or they'd pay it and then recoup the money. It was a pain. And then uh, one dentist was billing dental all the time and Delta Dental came back, asked for a million dollars back. And they said, it's not because he did it wrong. It's because these are considered medical. Like the babies don't have teeth. It falls under medical insurance. But since I'm a dentist, I'm out of network with medical insurance. So we give them a medical claim form. They mail off for a possible reimbursement. Most patients are getting several hundred dollars back. Some people get the whole thing back. It just depends on their benefits as an individual. But now it's between them and the insurance company. So yes, we give them a medical claim form and we send out refund checks. Every month we send out a bunch of refund checks. Perfect. And um, what is the youngest age that you would consider to be okay to do a release? Uh, youngest we've done is one day old. It was like the fourth or fifth baby is a home birth. They're like, we're out at Walmart. Thought we come get the tongue tie done. <laughs> like, okay. Mm -hmm. um, it was like to the tip. And so we did it. Um, but yeah, one day old, we had a four pound baby the other day. Mom was a physician. Um, you know, uh, is if they're out of the NICU and they're breathing okay, then you should be safe to do it. The only case you really wouldn't do it uh, is Pierre Robin sequence, where they have glossoptosis, micronathia, and a U-shaped soft pa uh, cleft palate because the tongue can't go up in the palate and it might flop back in the airway. Um, these other cases, like the ones with CP, where they don't have great tone, but like we we did, she was breathing better immediately. You heard the mom say, like, that's not made up. 
And I've heard now she's doing amazing. They're back in Ohio um, and she's eating better and still pooping better. Like it, it's not like a, it's not a placebo effect. It's not just like a one week effect. It, it continues on. And so if you do it right, it works. Right. And would you ever consider using nitrous oxide to help with these anxious patients? Yeah, yeah, you can use nitrous. Um, so the ones that won't sit there for it, though, won't sit there for nitrous either. It's like you're not going to get nitrous on a two-year-old. But again, that's why the pediatric dentist is the best suitor for this procedure, because you guys can assess that. You're like, that kid's not going to sit there if I try to give him a shot. That kid's not going to sit there for nitrous. You know, you can just like spot it from a mile away. And so some kids, if it's like an anxious 10-year-old and mom wants nitrous, sure, let's throw some nitrous on there, but it's another $80. And so we're, we try to balance everything out. Um, and the procedure, it's literally like 15 seconds. Now, if we numb, it's going to take a little bit longer for the numbing to work. So sometimes we'll have one that's really anxious and we'll use some nitrous. Yeah, that's okay. Just as long as you have a scavenger, it's safe to do it. And then I have two questions here that kind of go together. Um, so one person states that parents should should not touch the wound to do stretches um, that you can get the same healing without touching them. And then another person said that if there's any concern about scar tissue um, with rubbing on the wound in addition to the stretch. So wound care stretches, there's no good research on it. I'm working with Zoggy on like a wound healing and integration maturation scale called WIMS. Um, so then we can start looking at some of these things, but like a validated measure. But if you don't touch it, like it's going to stick back. Like parents say like, I didn't do any stretches. Like I just like did some exercises or they're like, oh, he did them himself, which it's going to be moderately uncomfortable. Just like if I'm stretching, right? My, my triceps or something, it's going to be moderately uncomfortable. Like if you don't feel the burn, you're not doing much. And so there's, so they used to say rub vigorously on the wound. That was one thing that could cause more scarring. Like is the second question, if you rub vigorously, that can mess it up. If you come with two fingers like this and then come up, often parents don't get all the way together and then like this, and they don't put enough pressure right on it. So what we found is holding the lower gum pad with a non-dominant hand, one index finger straight down the pad of the finger, not the nail, put some gloves on, just really slow, sustained forces right on it. It's you're just guiding the tissue healing. It's gentle. We're not like trying to hurt the baby. We're not trying to rip it back open, just guiding the healing. And that seems to be very effective uh, is what we found. Three times a day, not waking them up at night. Some people say six times a day, or like every three hours. So three times a day is sufficient um, is what we found. Okay. And then in regards to infants, um, would you recommend if a parent didn't, uh, rejects vitamin K, would you, do you question that at all in regards to doing the procedure? Yeah, that's a good question. So in our 25 hour course, Tongue Tied Academy, we go over all these things uh, in one hour. I can't fit all these things in, but so vitamin K is obviously important. Um, a lot of times they're doing oral vitamin K drops. The bigger risk is probably with like intracranial hemorrhage, or like a GI bleed. Honestly, if you're doing a laser procedure, I'm not going to go as wide. I'll make sure to keep it even more narrow. If I know they don't have vitamin K on board. Uh, if there is any bleeding, we'll warn them. If there's any bleeding at all afterward and you're concerned about it, you need to go to the ER. They can get a vitamin K shot. It'll stop right away. So it, it can do it afterward. Oral drops, they can kind of work, but just be extra careful. So we ask. We know the vitamin K status on everyone. Typically, it's the more crunchy granola, home birth type. I, I, I shop at Whole Foods. I was there today. So I'm <laughs> crunchy granola. But at the same time, you know, it's it's important. So if you know they have a tongue tie, yeah, vitamin K is very helpful. Um, will we not release it if they have it? We won't. It's not a hard no. We'll still release it, um, but being very careful. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then don't do it, obviously. Perfect. And then um, I think for our final question, because we're running out of time here, but um, do, does a provider need to have any specific type of education or credentials in order to perform for releases? Um, are they regulated in any way or? So... That's a good question. Um, so if you're a physician or a dentist, there's no question that falls in your realm. Uh, ENT, OB, pediatricians do them. Um, you know, obviously pediatric dentist, oral surgeon, periodontist, uh, general dentist. Um, you know, there's lots of people that can do them. Uh, where it gets a little bit more, quite just like nurse practitioners, physician assistants. Um, we've had some take our course that they, they did a great job and knew about it. So if your scope of practice in your state allows that, uh, then certainly they could. 
um, a lactation, speech therapist, myofunctional therapist, chiropractor could not do that. Um, so some mid-level providers can, uh, but yeah. And then midwives, midwives do it too. I'm probably leaving someone out, but anyway, hopefully that's helpful. It depends on scope of practice. All right. Wonderful. Well, yes. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Baxter, and answering all those questions. I know we didn't get to all of them, but um, you did a great job. I know normally you speak for a lot longer and that was, that was, that was I wonderful. tried to pack it all in for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you did great. Anyway. Um, so yeah, if you can um, just head to that last part there you go thank you so much um so once again we just want to say thank you uh, to the cspd foundation for sponsoring this webinar and we hope that all of you will be attending the conference this march in palm desert and there'll be a foundation reception with appetizers and cocktails and that's on friday march 22nd from 5 30 to 7 30 p.m and tickets are available um, for purchase when registering for the online meeting so thank you all for listening and that will end our session tonight. Thank you guys for coming. Nice to meet you all. Bye-bye. If you have questions, feel free to email us.